Hi there. So you've been uh, following, let's say, the 80-10-10 diet now for some time. You've experienced positive results from that, such as weight loss. Uh, perhaps you've gone through the detox experience and you've come out of that and you feel great, you look great, but you still may have emotional attachments to foods from the past. And um, this is where we get into the area of long-term transitioning. This is something, you know, that um, takes time to work at and requires patience on your part. It's like, uh, th the best way I can describe it is that with foods, it's like a relationship that we've had. And a lot of times, foods that we are emotionally attached to are usually associated with um, emotion, are, are associated with fond memories. And I'll give you an example. Um, back in 1995, I was dating my um, wife at that time, who's now my ex, uh, and we decided to take a, take a trip to New York City. And I'd never been to New York City before. And our first night there, uh, we went to a restaurant, a Lebanese restaurant, and we had rack of lamb with nice vintage wine, and there were belly dancers. And let me tell you, it was the most magical evening I ever experienced, and that whole trip was magical. That weekend, uh, my ex and I, we fell in love in New York City, and it's not too difficult to fall in love in New York City. It's a beautiful place, especially back in 1995. It was alive with optimism and hope. Um, it was truly magical on every level. Anyways, so that experience in New York City ultimately led to us getting married and having two beautiful children. And what became sort of a ritual for us in our lives was that at least once a month we would have rack of lamb. And we always enjoyed rack of lamb. We loved it. And it was it was like, you know, prior to that experience in New York City, I, although I liked lamb before, it didn't have that kind of association with it. So um, we would have rack of lamb once a month, and a lot of times we had it with guests over, and so there were more fond experience with rack of lamb. It became, a, you know, an important part of our life. And um, when we both became vegans now, giving up all meat and all animal products, we were fine until um, months into our veganism, we were invited over to a couple's house for dinner, an older couple, and they decided to serve rack of lamb because they knew how much we loved it in the past. And we, and we knew this ahead of time. Um, we could have phoned and said, no, no, we're now vegans, we don't want to, you know, uh, have that anymore and I don't think anybody would have taken too much offense but because there was still that emotional attachment and it was one of the you know out of all the foods from my pre-vegan days it was one of those foods that I was almost heartbroken that I would never be able to eat rack of lamb again and um, and that was a hard one to deal with and so my then wife at, and I at the time decided that we would just, what the heck, let's just this one time cheat and have some lamb. And so we went over and, and before we went over, we were full of anticipation and excitement that we were be, going to be able to have this lamb and we were, we were expecting to really enjoy it. And guess what? Even though it was cooked to perfection, it was a disappointment. It didn't meet our expectations. And so after that um, experience, we were able to say, that was nice, but it's time to move on. And, uh, and so this may be what you are experiencing now at this stage in your journey as a vegan or as a or you're following a low-fat vegan diet, 80-10-10 style. Um, 
Now, I know for the ladies out there, it's usually cheese where they have great difficulty with. I've talked to a lot of women that, you know, this has been their biggest issue becoming a vegan is that they really miss the cheese. And um, you got to realize that this is a journey. You, you are now, you know, for whatever reason, you've decided that you want to be healthy and you want to live a life uh, that's that's vibrant and um, and you realize that the foods of, that you're eating in the past were preventing you from having the lifestyle that you really want um, but that doesn't mean those past foods necessarily just disappear you don't just wake up one day and decide that hey I'm a new person now the past is a past no the past will still call out to you and even though you may have felt like you've let go of these foods it's almost like these foods are not letting letting go of you and um, you know you may dream about them at nighttime and uh, it's like they're calling for you come on just one more encounter together right and you know what there's go a good chance is is that you may um, have a setback and go back to those foods that you no longer want to have a relationship with anymore. And that's okay. Um, if that happens, yeah, you know, probably what will happen is the same experience that I had with the lamb was that it wasn't, it was a disappointment and that's fine. What's really important here, though, is that if you do go back to a particular food that you don't really want to be um, participating in anymore, then the important thing at this point is, is not to feel guilty about the fact that you've had a setback. Because guilt, I mean, guilt is, is, is not a it's an important faculty of our conscience. It, it, it helps us to determine between what is right and wrong so that, you know, like if we lie or if we cheat, um, we break the law, we feel guilty. And that's good. We should feel guilty. But the, the, that um, the guilt can also be misappropriated and, and it can be our emotions can use it in the wrong place and to feel guilty because you ate a food that you, you no longer want in your life anymore uh, is a mistake and it can lead to eating disorders so it's really important that if you're experiencing guilt we need to nip this in the bud now because um, it, there is the danger of it leading to a disorder in the long term and you definitely don't want to have an eating disorder that's not what being healthy is about. So, um, how do you do that? Well, first of all, you, f you probably will feel disappointed because you've made these accomplishments health-wise up until this point, and then you've had this setback. So disappointment is a natural emotion, and accept that. Um, but then, you know, let, let's do a little bit of reflection here where ask yourself why has this why has this particular food like let's say it's cheese have such a hold on me emotionally why and you know think about memories with that food and if there are good memories associated with that food those memories treasure hold on to those memories that experience of having lamb at that Lebanese restaurant in New York City I treasure that. That is a valuable experience. But you can now let go of the food that was associated with that experience. It's time to let it go. It's time to break up with that food. And then from, the, from there, you can now congratulate yourself for the accomplishments you, you have made towards health and fitness. You know, give yourself a reward, say, you know, acknowledge what, you're, what you are achieving and feel good about it and learn from that little setback that you've had. And you may have another setback down the road, but again, practice this, breaking up with your food, treasuring the memories that are associated with the food and letting go of the food itself and then affirming your accomplishments because you've done well, you've come a long way. Um, I hope that's 
of some help for you. Emotional transitioning is is probably what takes the longest and it really depends on your past on um, you know how emotionally attached you are to certain foods and you just you have to work through this stuff and you have to be patient and you know uh, and sometimes you might have to um, like for example if uh, you're if cheese is a real problem with you and you, you hit a difficult spot on your vegan journey uh, and you really, you know, you just have to have that piece of cheese, then I strongly, strongly recommend going for a vegan alternative. There are vegan um, cheeses out there. They're, I mean, they don't compare to the real cheese, I know that, but it may be a way of, of dealing with that temptation in the moment and you'll feel less disappointed afterwards. Yes, it's high in fat um, and it may not be the healthiest alternative, alternative, but it's probably better than going back to eating actual cheese. And it, that will definitely be a helpful step in, in eventually reaching the health goals that you want to reach. Again, this is a journey, you're in it for the long haul. And, um, you know, emotional attachments to foods are very powerful. And so keep on working at it. Don't let guilt get the better of you. And um, have a great day. God bless and peace be with you.